Hang on. Sorry about all this gurgling. That, right there, is uncontrollable. That is the sound of air coming out into this bag. It's just air. But that is literally, that's farting through a hole in the side of my body. And I can't help it. Sometimes that happens when I'm in the studio, when I'm on air, and I just... <clears throat> well, let's speak to our security correspondent, Frank Gardner. I'm Frank Gardner. I was the BBC's first ever security correspondent. Frank Gardner, BBC News in Saudi Arabia. I see my life in two halves. The Frank that traveled the world unhindered, and the Frank that came after. The BBC has confirmed tonight that a BBC team has come under fire from gunmen in a suburb of the Saudi capital, Riyadh. I was shot six times by Al-Qaeda, leaving me partially paralyzed at the age of 43. 16 years after I was attacked, my job as security correspondent for the BBC is as important to me as it ever was. So this is my, my man on the inside of the embassy. Are you OK with being disabled? It's pointless not being OK with it, because there's nothing I can do about it. So, frankly, it makes bugger all difference whether I'm OK with it or not, because it is what it is. I'm going to meet a young man whose spinal cord injury is far more severe than mine, but who hasn't let it stop him trying to lead a full life. Hello. Yo. Gerard, yeah? Yeah. How are you doing? What brought you to the wheelchair? Or what brought the wheelchair to you? <laughs> Two and a half years ago now, mm. I was teaching in Sweden mm -hmm. and I dived into a lake head first and I broke my neck. He has paralysis in all four limbs and depends on 24 hour live in support from his carer class. So, this is, this is my, uh, my hands and legs. The water's fine. Yeah. I wash my face twice. I try and do as much as I can because. Um, I mean, even doing these small activities gives me a little bit of uh, muscular workout yeah. with the, there's a bit of biceps going on. Gerard faces challenges far greater than I do, but I'm struck by how quickly he's adapted to his new situation. So this is a leg spasm, yeah? Yeah, this is fun. It's a bit of a, a strange one because you have no control over it. Yeah. You know, I got injured age 43, he's been injured age 22, and so he's got, you know, potentially seven more decades of this in front of him. You know, he's not wallowing in self-pity or anything, he's just getting on with it. And I love his positive attitude, it's brilliant. All right, hold on. And then just as tight as it'll go. Yep. After his accident, Gerard returned to university to complete his degree in Arabic. Is that good? Perfect. Brilliant. And then you just got to pray that I don't spill it down myself. Cheers if you do, you do. Cheers. <laughs> He's now studying for his master's here in Edinburgh. One of the things that I hadn't really anticipated from mm. my accident is the fact that girls won't really give you a second glance, and they look at you and they just kind of go, oh, wow, he's on a chair. Mm. And they don't really see that as attractive. I quite liked how I looked. Yeah. And I, and I kept good... Um, my body in good condition. Yeah. I was doing a lot of sport. I think it's. I think it's just adjusting to the the vulnerability that being in a chair puts you in. You know from your day-to-day -day living that it's far, far harder than it was before. The negatives are endless, but. Most importantly, you've still got your, your kind of interest in the Middle East and in life and in... But I would, you know, don't abandon the Middle East. I mean... I'd really, I'd really like to go back. Inshallah. This is a, this is a contract. <laughs> this is unfair. <laughs> OK, we've shaken on it. Gerard is going to go and will have been back to the Middle East. I'd love to. Yeah. yeah.